Hello, and thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to be discussing global shutter on this pedestal here versus rolling shutter on this pedestal over here. Let's get started. First off, let's get into global shutter. Now, global shutter is the cream of the crop. It is the best sensor, best style sensor you can get out there. Global shutter is as simple as this. Get rid of the lens here so you can see it better. Here is where there's a little covering over where the film is exposed. As I push this button down, it is moving so fast so you can't really see exactly what's going on, but I'll explain it here. You get full bursts on each frame of film, so everything's captured simultaneously. Rolling shutter is a little less cool. What rolling shutter is, which most cameras are now, except for the Bolex, which this is being filmed with, and black magic, certain black magic cameras actually are also global shutter right now, which that is definitely worth looking into. So rolling shutter, while it does get better low light capabilities, goes like this and moves across and finally captures. So when you're moving sideways, it's capturing and your images get bent like trees or things of that nature, uh, poles along the sides of roads. Now someone's gonna say, why am I gonna film on the side of a road? there's gonna be a time you're gonna do it. Or simple just pan movements. You're panning across someone playing guitar or moving over here for a music video and film, moving to a singer. And the side movement just hurts your eyes to view it. It's just not uh, natural. So the goal with cinema is to mirror the human experience and the human eye. And global shutter is exactly that. Rolling shutter is not terrible. It's just knowing your limits and trying to only do certain kinds of shots with it. You don't want to do panning side movements with rolling shutter, or at least not very fast. Let's say you're visiting Italy and you want to get a scenic countryside shot. Set it up on that tripod or handhold and just go real slow. If you do a quicker pan, it's just, you may as well throw that shot out. It's better to do a setup steady shot than to be moving with rolling shutter. The other effect of rolling shutter is the jello effect. So if the camera was wobbly at all or moving around, you get the edges kind of moving on the picture. Once again, also not realistic. So let's jump to the field and check out some samples of global shutter versus rolling shutter. I'll be using the digital Bolex for the global shutter and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera for the rolling shutter. Now the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera is not the highest offender when it comes to rolling shutter. Sony mirrorless cameras are the worst. Sony a7S II, while a great cinema camera right now for low light, is the worst offender at a rating of 25. The Ari Alexa is the standard for TV and film industry right now for filming. Uh, it's 2K raw shooting camera, and it's about $50,000, $60,000. They do have the Ari Alexa Mini, that's $40,000. That's 2K raw, it is a rolling shutter. However, it is a rating of three, so the scales like this, Ari Alexa's way down here, almost at global shutter status. Sony's way up here. Panasonic GH5 is somewhere in the middle, and you got all the others in between. Canon tends to be on the lower spectrum, but it's gotta be at least a 10. It's a lot higher than the Ari Alexa for side movement, things like that. So that's why the Ari Alexa looks so good, and it is a standard, and the dynamic range is so high on that one. So let's take a look at these samples and see what you think. So you've just seen the comparison from global shutter and rolling shutter. There is a big difference. Some may say it's small to the untrained eye, but your eye can tell a difference between quality and cheap. And YouTube is okay, but let's get into that cinema realm with everything we're doing. Thanks for watching.